Hi, hey, I'm Rod from uh, Leyden's Hollow here on PEI, Canada. Uh, I'm just going to talk a little bit how I uh, fence my Great Pyrenees in. Uh, they are dogs that are known to wander, and it's important to have fencing to keep your dogs safe. It's a pet owner's responsibility to care for their dogs. So this is how I do my fencing. I mean, I'm sure there's many, many other ways to do it, but this is just how I do mine, and it works for me. Uh, I use electric fence. It's just more economical. Uh, I fence in a fairly large area. It's not huge, but it's a lot bigger than somebody's backyard in town, put it that way. Uh, okay, this is how I do my fencing. I start off, my ground wire, I keep about uh, five to six inches off the ground. I keep it low so that the dogs can't get their heads underneath it and push up and sneak out without getting a shock like they're supposed to. Uh, my bottom one, like I said, six inches off the ground, and that's a complete ground. There's no power to that line. The next one, I keep up about five inches, roughly five to six inches from the lower one, and that's a hot wire. The reason I do it so close together is because of the fur of the Great Pyrenees, because if they just touch it with their just the sides of their body or anywhere else, they don't really feel anything. They have really thick coats. So I set it up so that if they poke their heads through, that's when they feel it. And that's uh, the easiest way to keep them in. So saying that, then the next one I put up is another ground wire. Same reason. It's about four or five inches apart from the hot wire. And my next hot wire is about 10 inches apart. A little bit further, because if they're poking their heads up like this to try to sneak out through that way, they're going to hit the ground. And the hot wire, same thing. And my very top one is a hot wire, and I usually put it up to about four feet because they're, they're not going to go up there. Once they're trained for fencing, they don't go close to it. So, and uh, it works great. And I'll tell you how I managed to train my dogs. It wasn't difficult. Logan, I got him when he was 10 weeks old. He was very easy. He touched the fence once with his nose. That was three years ago. He hasn't touched it since. He's a good boy, pretty smart, very good at his job. Now, Stormy, she was a little bit more determined when I got her. She was only nine weeks old. And, uh, you know, when you bring home a puppy, everybody is all oh, so cute, so cute, up in her arms. Out. We were outside. We were all outside playing with her and just getting her used to Logan and running around. And uh, she made a beeline for the fence. Off in the distance. I guess she just wanted to know what it was. So she ran like right at it. Didn't slow down at all. And what happened is her back leg went over the hot wire. So her leg and her belly was touching the actual touching the hot wire. So she was yelping pretty loud. I mean, it was okay. I was there within like three seconds and had her off. I got a shock. Wouldn't the first one, and it sure probably won't be the last. I deal with electric fence all the time, so. Now, she's really good. She don't touch the fence at all. Both of my dogs are completely trained for fencing. Uh, I have no problems with them whatsoever. They don't try and run to the fence anymore. They always stay back three, four feet from the fence itself. And I don't have to worry about them getting out because I've always been scared of I've lost dogs in the past before I figured out how to get the fencing to work better uh, to being hit by a car. And that is probably heartbreaking. I mean, that's just something I just don't want to go through ever again. So that's it for now. I just thought I'd let people know how I did my fencing for my dogs. And I feel very secure and safe that they're locked in and can't get out. Bye for now. Thanks for watching.